Over the previous few chapters, we've learned how to work with databases using Rails models. Now we can apply that knowledge to adding the basic CRUD to our application. Let's begin by reviewing the MVC architecture diagram again. In the beginning, we learned how to work with controllers and views to create dynamic pages and return them to the browser. After that, we shifted our focus, and we learned to interact with the database by creating models and associations. And we worked with those not from a browser, but via the Rails console. Well, the bridge we need now is we need to learn how to work with our models from the controller. Then we'll be able to do everything in the controller from the browser that we did in the console. We'll be able to create, read, update, and delete records. And those four actions, create, read, update, and delete, are going to form the main ways that we interact with the database. So we actually have an acronym for them. We say CRUD, create, read, update, and delete. And because they're so common, in Rails, there are some standard controller actions that we're going to use for implementing CRUD. Now, you don't have to use these same action names, but again, this is the Rails convention and it's better to learn the rules before you start breaking them. So let's look at what they are now. For each element of CRUD, there are two actions associated with it. Let's start by looking at create. Create has two actions, new and create. New is going to display a web form that is empty and ready to, for us to fill out with the data that we'd like to enter into the database. When we submit that web form, it goes to the create action, and create processes the form and either saves that information to the database or handles any of the errors that come up. So new displays the form, create processes the form. It's a two-step process. Let's jump over read for a moment and go down to update, because it works very similar to the way create does. The only difference is that now we have existing data in the database. So the web form now is going to be pre-populated with what's in the database. So edit will display a form with that data. And then when we actually hit submit to, give, to make our changes, update will process the form. Delete works the same way. Delete displays information about the record we're about to delete. Destroy actually does the destruction. The fourth part of CRUD, read, is going to work a little bit differently. It's not going to have this form form processing pair. It still has two actions, but the first action is list, which is just going to return a list of records to us. So we'll see many records, a set of records. Show will display a single record. It's a detail view for a single record in the database. Together, these eight actions make up the core of working with CRUD and Rails, and you will use them over and over and over again in every application that you build. So in this chapter, we're going to see how to implement these. And we're going to start out by looking at read, since that's the one that doesn't require any form processing. We'll start with that one, and then we'll go to create, update, and delete. And we'll do all of those in a brand new controller. And I want to give you a couple of tips about controllers before we get started there. The first tip is that I'm going to be demonstrating how to add the CRUD for subjects. But I'd like you to also try and add the same CRUD for pages and sections on your own. So I'll create the subjects controller, then it'll be up to you to create the pages and the sections controller. You can do it either after each movie, or you can do it at the end of the chapter. But it'll give you a chance to practice what you've learned for yourself. You'll notice also that we've broken up the CRUD into separate controllers. So there's typically one controller per model, and we typically use plural names as well. So subjects controller, not subject controller. There's the S in there. And that lets us know that we're controlling our subjects, all of the subjects, not just one. All of them that are in the database are being controlled by this controller. Doing this is also going to allow for us to have very clear URLs that clearly define what we're trying to work with and what action we want to perform on it. So we have subjects new and subjects list. Pages new, pages list. Sections new, sections list. It helps to give us really common sense URLs. The other note that I want to make is that throughout this chapter, in order to keep things moving along, I'm going to cut and paste a lot of code, especially HTML. So remember that you can pause the video if you need to copy something down. Let's jump over to the command line and create the subjects controller to get ourselves started. So you'll see that in my controllers folder, I have application controller and demo controller. I'm going to create a new one now. We saw how to do that earlier with Rails generate controller. And then the name of the controller we want is capital subjects with an S on the end. That'll create our subjects controller as well as a few extra files. If we look over here, sure enough, we have subjects controller. And we can do the same thing very quickly by just saying, pages controller, and I can hit the up arrow and have sections controller. And those will be for you to work in, for you to fill out, but now we have them in place. So now let's get started implementing the CRUD, and we'll begin with the read actions.